Queen Bee, Sasha Fierce, Black Wonder Woman. Three very common and completely legitimate nicknames that I did not make up used to refer to the one and only Beyonce Giselle Knowles Carter. The truth is, I could list off all the accomplishments that she's had throughout her career, the records she's broken, the sheer magnitude of Academy recognition that she's received, but do I really need to? I mean, this is Beyonce we're talking about. Like, who on God's majority blue earth has not heard of Beyonce? Yet somehow, the rock I live under is so unbelievably massive that I've never listened to a single Beyonce album ever. Like, I could probably count the amount of Beyonce songs I know on one hand. We've got Halo. Um, no single ladies, obviously. Uh, excuse me. Ir irresistible. That's one of them, I think. Empire State of Mind. Did she? Was that her? Did she do that one? But with her new country album, Cowboy Carter, being set to release in late March, now seems as good a time as any to stick my head in the honey pot. Get it? Because like her fan base is called the Beehive. It's like. Honey. So the goal for today's video is to listen to every single Beyonce album, effectively rank, review, and synopsize every album, and lastly, but actually first and foremost, figure out what the fuss is about. Because when you think about the greatest pop stars of our generation, say the past 20 to 25 years, Beyonce is probably at the top of that list, or depending on who you ask, maybe she shares first place with Taylor Swift. Haha, <laughs> you guys thought I wasn't going to find a way to squeeze her into the video, but I did. T-Swizz, that's my brother right there, alright? That's my home slice. And yet, I'd still probably put Beyonce over her. If if I'm being honest, like that's how much her name precedes her. I know three Beyonce songs and I'm putting her over the woman that I essentially owe my entire YouTube career to. So needless to say, my expectations for her are higher than Snoop. I'm really hoping that these albums aren't poop. So if you want to get the inside scoop, keep watching to see if my opinions on her sway like a hula hoop and subscribe to join the group. And if you enjoy this video, give that like button a boop. Oh! Oh! What can I say? What can I say? Oh, dang. I forgot Snoop doesn't smoke anymore. That sucks. Kind of, I mean, good for him, but that ruins my entire verse. Anyways, Beyonce was born on September 4th, 1981 in Houston, Texas. So she is not a phony for making a country album. She began her music career in the 90s as a member of the R&B girl group Girls Time, spelt with a Y. For, for some, I don't know, because the 90s. And after only seeing limited success, the ladies pulled themselves together made some budget cuts, and evolved into what we now know as Destiny's Child. Releasing three studio albums and a Christmas album before Beyonce says, you know what? I am fucking so tired of carrying you bitches on my back, okay? My sciatica be acting up for real. Or something along those lines. And she dropped her debut album, Dangerously In Love. As someone who wasn't alive while Destiny's Child was a thing, I do kind of wonder like how obvious it was that she was going to be the breakout star. Like, you know how we used to look at One Direction and be like, yeah, Harry Styles is probably going to be that guy. Not that he was the best, but he was the best. I'd imagine it was the same for Beyonce because with all due respect, I don't know who any of these other girls are. And when you look at some of the later album covers, Beyonce does seem to be like the, the main focus, you know, kind of radiating that bitch energy. I hate the way that I talk. You know, it did not used to be like this. Anyway, she dropped one more album with Destiny's Child and then shifted all of her focus to her solo career, where she released six more studio albums. B-Day, I Am Sasha Fierce, Four, Beyonce, Lemonade, and Renaissance, with her eighth studio album being set to release March 29th, which is hopefully a week from the day this video drops, depending on if I'm able to get it out on time. She also has a handful of live albums. She has a collaborative album with Jay-Z and this thing called The Lion King colon The Gift. I don't really know what that is. And normally I just listen to all of them. You know, like, fuck it, why not? But we'll see. You know, it's just so much. It honestly depends on how hard I'm fiending by the end of this initial process. So for now, the seven albums that we will be listening to add up to a total of 105 songs and 424 minutes or seven hours and four minutes of music. Except this video took a little bit longer than I anticipated to make. So Cowboy Carter's kind of been out for like two weeks already. So yeah, I'm gonna include that a little bit at the end. Not a full on review like I am for the other albums because I am planning on making a separate video for Cowboy Carter, but I'll talk about it a little bit. So yeah, here are the updated numbers. So not too bad. Um, that does include the platinum version of Beyonce, but it does not include the deluxe version of B-Day because I looked at that and then like most of it is just Spanglish remixes and I don't discriminate, but I also don't speak Spanish. So maybe I'll go back to it at the end. We'll see. Just got out of class, about to head to the gym and listen to the first Beyonce album. Other than that, I don't even know what it's called. I didn't look yet, so <laughs> it should be interesting. And I will update you guys after I'm done listening. Let's go. All right, album one down. Uh, <laughs> I forget the name of it again. Dangerously in Love is a good album, but nothing crazy. And a lot of the songs follow a really similar format and just keep a super slow pace. 
And if I'm being honest, it was really fucking boring. <laughs> I got curious, so I went back and tried to listen to a couple old Destiny's Child songs just to like get an idea of what their sound and their vibe was back then. And this album is pretty much just that, but like without the other childs of Destiny, like de without Destiny's other children, you know? And it's funny because Crazy in Love is such a timeless banger, you know? I feel like you could hear that on the radio today and it wouldn't stand out at all. And that being the first song, I really wasn't expecting this album to feel so old it's just so old if beyonce decided to have a baby instead of dropping this album the day it came out that baby would be older than me and it's not like that's an inherently bad thing you know i don't only listen to new music it's just a little hard to look past sometimes i don't know like there's a song on the album called signs where i kid you not the entire hook is just listing off different zodiac signs like what is that bro what are you doing but i digress you know there's always gonna be something about 2000s r&b that just gives me warm fuzzies and i'll say it once now and like never again for the rest of the video probably beyonce's vocals fire obviously we know this from runs to flowing to just jumping keys over and over again you know just just to flex just for fun and it's great you know you guys know me i love some nice vocals vocals are honestly one of the most important parts for music in my opinion if i don't like your voice probably will not like your stuff but the reason i'm putting that out there now is because when you listen to all these albums back to back to back to back to back to back to back you kind of just get used to it like when taylor swift stepped up her singing for red you notice it because it was kind of mid up until that point but beyonce is like consistently cooking from the jump and I, that's like one of the things i knew i could expect from this experience is yeah all these albums she's gonna sound great so none of the notes that i took while listening to these albums were about her vocal performance because i guess i just got desensitized to it i don't really know i actually thought it was kind of fun listening to younger beyonce just knowing how much her voice has matured since then it's like watching a little squirtle waddle around you know shooting a little bit like a little geyser coming out of his mouth knowing that someday he's going to turn into a massive beefcake with two girthy bazookas on his back and listening to that growth from album to album to album to album to album to album to album was kind of one of my favorite parts of the entire process in like a weird way i don't know why i just find it so fascinating how like your voice can change even after puberty's wrapped up. Like, I'm so curious what my voice will sound like 10 years from now. Here's my top five songs. I honestly don't remember any of them, but apparently I took notes of these and I like these ones. I don't know. I listened to a bunch of these albums multiple times. I only listened to this one once. Um, I probably should go back and listen to it again, but it just seemed pretty straight to the point. It's fun, it's cool, but I will be darned if this album is not at the bottom of my album ranking. <laughs> So I kind of fucked around and had the single best incline set of my life while listening to Irreplaceable. You must not, know about me. not sure how to feel about that, but V-Day was pretty fire. It's just so much more bold, so much more fierce, so much more fun, so much more interesting than the last one. Like, usually I'll give an artist a couple albums slack, you know, before I'm like, oh shit, they're cooking. Ooh, but ring the alarm. Sugar Mama, Sugar Mama, I don't know how to say Suga Mama. Insane, dude. All right, Remyonce is cooking. Just like Dangerously in Love, B-Day does happen to have a moderate to severe case of old. But I was actually alive when this album came out, so the moments that were a little outdated just felt more nostalgic. Dangerously in Love wasn't a bad album by any means, but my goodness was it a slog. That album was 15 tracks. You could have convinced me it was 15 months. B-Day is technically only two tracks less than that, but it just keeps like a faster overarching pace that makes it less boring in my opinion even the moments on the album that are slower and kind of sexy it doesn't drag too long this album is also around the time where i feel like you start to see her carve out her own lane or her own sound her own type of music that she's gonna make it's like a little hatchling of beyonce's career you know she hasn't fully committed to this newer poppier upbeat sound but she's getting there here are my top five songs really cool really nice irreplaceable is a fucking banger um and yeah this album was good this album is definitely an album. It's definitely a collection of songs. Yeah, there are songs on this album. <laughs> Something about it really reminds me of Sand Castles in the Sand. You guys know that How I Met Your Mother episode? Met you at the mall. Just like that era of music, I guess. Technically, I'm pretty sure Robin Sparkles was in the 90s, but still. I'll be honest, I actually really liked it on my first listen because there are some good songs. You know, I will stand by the fact that Halo is a good, well-written song. But the more I had time to sit on it, I was like, shit, bro, this is very melodramatic, very self-indulgent, and pretty corny for the most part. You know, I wouldn't say there's anything about it as a whole, 
that makes the corner just a lot of smaller choices that just really clearly date it and it's really hard to look past we've got plenty of songs coming out these days that replicate older sounds right 2000s pop punk 90s r&b 70s disco right literally there was by on the, the most recent ariana grande albums is like disco music and yeah you could make the argument that that's all just nostalgia core at the end of the day but i feel like part of the reason why it's seen success is because those trends were at least somewhat timeless this album ain't like that and that's honestly the best way i can describe it the type of nostalgia that just doesn't really sit as well with you you know like neon leg warmers or neon sweatbands or john travolta i don't see us ever getting to a point where we replicate that single ladies <laughs> that said if there's one artist that can get away with it is beyonce only because this is when i started to realize regardless of any choices that are being made lyrically or productionally is productionally a word? Beyonce is still always going to be there. So you kind of know, like, at least somewhat what to expect. Throughout the rest of the video, I spent a lot of time talking about Beyonce's presence on her music. And how prominent of a role that actually plays. And, like, I don't really know how to describe it. Because, yeah, it is because she just has, like, a really rich voice. And really interesting vocal deliveries. You know, always just doing a lot. But it is kind of one of those things that you just can't really put on paper. You know, someone like Taylor Swift, while she writes great songs and makes great music, sonically, when you're listening to it, like, you could hand that song off to someone else and it wouldn't really be that big of a deal. Like, her voice is not carrying it so much. Her her presence on the song is not carrying it so much. Beyonce, on the other hand, is like, these songs really do showcase that she's the only one that could be doing this. You know what I mean? I do want to stress, I still think from an individual song standpoint, this album is pretty good. And it was, like, legitimately fun to listen to. Here are my top five songs, you know, Smash Into You, If I Were a Boy, Halo, they're all good, they're all fun. Also, I did my research, apparently Sasha Fierce is Beyonce's alter ego that she uses to separate her personal life and herself from her career. Kind of like a The weekend Able Test space situation and you can't kind of see that as like a reason behind why this album feels so melodramatic because like she's just kind of going all out because it's like it's not her it's sasha fierce sasha fierce could do whatever she wants and i can respect that i just struggle with where to draw the line usually when it comes to pop music i say the cornier the better but i think it's the fact that it's not just corn but it's like old corn you know that's just been like sitting out okay album i listened to it like two or three times i'd probably give it like a four i don't know speaking of four yeah. clever clever what goes around comes back around hey all right two days ago not yesterday i listened to four definitely my favorite so far i think that one and sasha fierce bangers and i know as stupid as it sounds i'm glad that we're getting into the more modern beyonce because i did like the older albums but they were kind of old sounding you know and i'm young i'm a youngin I'm a young blood, okay? <laughs> I want some young music. Woo! Okay, okay, okay. You know how for some TV shows, like like more specifically sitcoms, it takes a couple seasons for them to figure out their characters and figure out character dynamics. But once they get into that flow state, it's like banger after banger after banger. That is four for Beyonce. As good as she was on the previous albums, this feels like the first one where they realized the winning lottery ticket they've been sitting on. And it's like, rather than Beyonce's presence on a song being the best part of it, it's basically the only part of it. You know, it's like the center focal point and everything else, any instrumentals, any production, any lyrics are just kind of there to support her. You know what I mean? I think it's a better, more interestingly constructed album. Definitely clears the other three by a metric ass load. I hate to keep shitting on Sasha Fierce, you know? But when you look at that album, most of the songs are like very predictable. You can pretty much just listen to like the first minute and then get the gist for the entire song. But right out the gate, opening track on four, Love on Top. That's the one that I was referencing earlier, which just keeps jumping keys at the end over and over again, literally rewarding you for listening. Like the longer you listen, the more you're you're getting from it. And I was a little confused because when I heard that song and how good that was, I kind of felt like they prematurely blew their load. But no, literally the next song you get, fire, bro. Andre 3000 and Kanye on the intro. Andre 3000 and Kanye West. Kanye fucking West, bro. Are you kidding me? Your friend's bad too. Oh. He got the swag, saw she dripping swag goo. Next up, School and Life. Great song, no nice little 80s vibe. Then Countdown, bro. Fucking Countdown, dude. Are you kidding me? I could just keep going song for song. You know, this album is really consistently great. Even when she slows things down a little bit on songs like One Plus One or Rather Die Young. It's never boring. 
And, you know, the best way I could describe it is it feels like each idea they have for the song, they're just doing everything they can to squeeze all the juice out of it and not cutting any corners. You know, just leaving everything they possibly can out on the floor for all 57 minutes and 42 seconds. Obviously, big songs don't always equal good songs. But I think that at this point in her career, Ford just does a really good job at showcasing everything that Beyonce can bring to the table and like maximizing her potential. In a way, like, I feel like the previous songs were not very distinct to her. And this is where she, like, actually starts leaving her mark on her music in, like, a more individual way. It becomes even more so the case in later albums, but this is, like, the start of it. And, yeah, it's really fucking good. Shouts out to Four. This, to me, is, like, the definitive beyonce album anyways here are my top five songs this is easily one of my favorite albums from her really only fighting with one other one maybe two uh, but we'll get into it you would never need another lover. to be honest i liked this album on my first listen but it was really like nothing crazy i kind of felt like it was just doing what four did but adding a little bit of deeper messaging and more of a interesting like underground club vibe to it and i do still kind of think that's what it does for the most part it wasn't until i listened to the rest of her discography and came back to this album that i really started to like it a lot more like now it's one of my favorites and that could be because i talked to a lot of beyonce fans since my first listen and pretty much all of them said that this was their favorite it could be because i became a little more familiar with her vibe you know her thing her shtick I hate that word, but I can't think of any other way of saying it. I don't know. It, it's impossible to tell. But there really are some great standout, just super fun songs on this album. XO, Drunk in Love. Personally, I really like Partition. I could understand if it's a little bit divisive. Beyonce, all on his mouth like the guy. Considering that this album is self-titled, you kind of expect it to be more of a, a personal reflection type album for her. Which would have been a really nice change up. You know, because up until now, she has sort of been a spectacle right maybe this is where they finally pull back the curtain and we start to see her with more personal music and it does do that like these are definitely more personal songs to her but it pretty quickly just becomes a lot deeper than that you know right out the gate we have this soundbite of her being asked what her aspiration in life is to which she responds saying she just wants to be happy which is i guess pretty much probably everyone's answer you know what i mean but it's just super deep to think about that and i think that that sets this tone for the album that's very like kind of sad kind of deep kind of introspective you know this album's gonna be different we're not getting the cute little halo to the left to the lefts on this album and right out the gate i mean first track pretty hurts is a great song digging into societal beauty standards and how they can really affect a woman while she's growing up there's a particular line from that song that i just love pageant the pain away which to me is so deep right because i'm pretty sure that beyonce grew up in like the pageant circuit right i think i heard that somewhere and listen i mean no type of disrespect at all you know there are plenty of people out there that i'm sure get super passionate about pageants and i think it's cool you know good for you i'm not educated enough to really understand them um but to me as an outsider's perspective they kind of just seem like an opportunity for young girls to play into whatever standard society would have for them you know looking pretty wearing makeup cute skinny girls fucking showing off your little talents like oh look at me i can freaking play an instrument look at me i can dance look at me i can fucking you know you, you know and then literally being scored based off of that they're saying you are the best all those other girls are worse than you that's gotta be therapy bro like that's gotta be a one-way ticket to therapy for life so going back to the line you know pageant the pain away if you're feeling inadequate put your effort into fitting that mold so that you can receive validation from men essentially i feel like my explanation here was a little bit ignorant i guess that is the good part about having spent so much time editing this is that i could take more time to like rewatch it and see what takes i don't like or what things i say that are stupid saying that women just do pageants to like please the male gaze is like saying that guys just go to the gym to please the female gaze you know that's not true and while it could be slightly rooted in that to a certain extent that doesn't mean that that's the sole reason you're doing it so i feel like that that was kind of insensitive of me to to, to just assume that because i don't even really have that much experience with the pageant scene but in my eyes it's like the idea of a mom or, or dad probably a mom though thrusting their daughter into like pageants forcing them to do it from a young age and living vicariously through them not a big fan of that because it'll kind of like adds this like amount of pressure on her growing up i'd imagine and that's where you get the therapy that i was talking about but i'm 20 years old i don't really know anything about parenting so it's not a big deal you do you i'll let you rock it's cool pageant the pain away like, that's actually wild, bro. On the first song, too. Like, this is easily her most ambitious and deepest album yet. And what I really like is it ends on this beat where it's like Beyonce has made it. You know, she's had a super successful career. And she's now asking herself what she wants her legacy to be. And it's definitely not to the left to the left. I think moving forward, you start to see that 
is something that really matters to her, you know, wanting to use her influence to make a difference or just like stand for something in a way that, you know, a lot of artists don't typically do. But we'll get more into the deeper stuff at the end. For now, I think this album is great. Another one that I'd like more and more with every listen. Here are my top five songs, Drunk in Love, Smash. Riding on my surfboard, surfboard. Riding on that wood, riding, riding on that. <sighs> okay. At this point, bro, Beyonce is peaking. Four and self-titled are two fantastic albums. There's, there's no way that she's gonna get better, right? When he fought me good, I take his ass to Red Lobster. Lemonade is my favorite Beyonce album, hands down, print it. Obviously, if we're gonna talk about this album, I do have to address her and Jay-Z's very public marital struggles that happened prior to its release. His ugly ass cheated on her, bro. Like, what the fuck? How, how, what, what, what? Jay-Z cheated on Beyonce? Jay-Z cheated on what, what, huh? What? What? And it's really not my place to give my, my opinions on that situation, you know, it's not my business at the end of the day. But like, what the fuck, bro? Rule number one of punching above your weight class. Understand that you're punching above your weight class. You ain't supposed to be there, Jay. All right, look in the mirror. Your ugly ass is not supposed to be there. You're that good. You got that lucky, fam. Although that drama, that T, doesn't really play a big role in the album. In the songs that do address it, I really like how she doesn't villainize him. She doesn't over-dramatize it, you know, in a way that is like... You know, trying to strike deeper emotion than what it actually is. Like, you know how sometimes when Taylor Swift would write a breakup song, it's super, you know, like, it's like her world is ending. I feel like that is effective in its own right, because that's how it does feel a lot of the time when you're dealing with, like, a heartbreak, dealing with a breakup. But this is more, quote-unquote, respectable, in my opinion. You know, Beyonce, at this point, she's a grown woman. She's not about to let some man, you know, make her feel like shit. And I think her perspective... And her reflection that she does on this album is just super mature. Beyonce's career stands for, among other things, women empowerment, right? And I think this album shows that the most. It's like Beyonce staying strong when it's the hardest to. And I think it results in some really powerful stuff. You know, there's one song, Freedom. It's just tough, bro. Like that marching band sort of fight song feel to it. It's so personal while still feeling like bigger than her. It's almost like she's taking the opportunity to show if I can stomach this, if I can get over this, all of us can. All, all women across the world are strong enough to get through something like this. You know what I mean? There's one line, painting white flags blue kind of a bar now the way i'm interpreting it i haven't i haven't really double checked with genius yet you know waving a white flag is surrendering in war right so rather than throwing in the towel on her marriage rather than throwing in the towel on her family she's painting those white flags blue blue ivy is the name of her child's daughter 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 higher level and i've never personally been cheated on at least not yet not to jinx myself, but because of that, I, I don't really know what it's like. I, I don't have a good understanding of how it feels and what it really means. But I'm definitely one of those people that thinks it's not completely unforgivable. Obviously, in most instances, it's cause for a breakup, at least. But particularly when you're married with kids, your relationship becomes so much more than just the two of you. Um, so you may have like lost your partner in that sense, but Beyonce's making the right choice staying with him. You know what I mean? They have a family. And you know, look at them now. They seem to be doing well. Jay, you're still a fucking idiot. Like, what are you doing, bro? Oh, my God. But anyways, removing that context from the album, even, I still think it's really great. Like, it doesn't stand out sonically in her discography. You know, it doesn't really get into the same nitty and gritty as the last album does either. But it doesn't really need to because the emotional content is really spearheading it. So it's different. You know, it's like apples and oranges. I really like Lemonade, though, bro. Formation. Whew. Oh, probably her best song to date. Like, probably my favorite Beyonce song, period. But let's move on. I feel like falling in love. Hmm. This album is fun. Um, it was honestly a little underwhelming. It's basically just Beyonce doing house music. You know, thematically, I don't think there's anything crazy going on. And in case you didn't know, Yes And was actually one of my least favorite songs on Eternal Sunshine. So I, I don't really like house music. That said, I still enjoyed it. Um, it's Beyonce, you know? Even when she tries new things, her presence on a song is just so prominent that it's like you can overlook those things and still enjoy it because it's, it's it's her first and foremost, you know? Okay, so my Renaissance take, not that great. I definitely still think that for Beyonce and Lemonade are better. Just in my personal opinion, I enjoyed them more. But Renaissance is a grower. You know, I feel like I kind of just summed it up as house music. That's really not the case at all. The production on these songs is actually so much like variety when I'm going to re-listen to it that I picked up on. You know, like it's actually insane. I might even go as far as to say it's like some of her best 
vocal performances, definitely here and four, I feel like are like insane, where she's just like flexing on us, you know? Um, and that's really cool. On top of that, the production is just really like fun, really interesting, kind of like a mesh of like a pop R&B and then little hip hop sprinkles in there too, which I really like. Um, yeah, you know, it is house music-y, but uh, not really. Calling it house music kind of just feels like an oversimplification. Um, there's so much more that this album has to offer that I really just barely scratched the surface for. Maybe I'll try and make a video on it if I ever have the time. I have a really busy schedule, but maybe it'll get its own video someday. Who knows? Not something I felt connected to, but fun enough for me to keep listening. Those are pretty much my only thoughts. Cuff It, I think, is a really fun song, but it would play at my gym, like, every day last summer, sometimes twice every day last summer keep in mind i'm only there for like an hour so if you're playing the same song twice in an hour it's like what are you doing dude so now i fucking hate that song so here's my top five and yeah to the left, to the left. going into this video i really didn't know what to expect i know i played it off as kind of a joke at the beginning but i genuinely haven't listened to any of beyonce's music before making this i don't know how that's possible okay it just is <laughs> I mean, yeah, I know the popular ones, but only from, like, hearing them at, like, the mall or something. Yes, there's internet under my rock, okay? I just hadn't listened to any of her music. Yeah, I know I'm uncultured. Yeah, I chose to get my hair cut like this. How is that relevant? So what were some of my biggest takeaways from this entire listening experience? First off, Beyonce is a generational talent. Her singing, her dancing, her presence on all of her music is what makes her so famous, in my opinion. If I'm being honest, I don't think there's any other artist in the music industry right now that has such a prominent presence on their music or just when they sing that she can release a country album and have it not feel too out of the ordinary because each of these albums dip their toes in different genres but first and foremost they are Beyonce albums and at this point that should really be its own genre second I think she really is like one of the only artists that has successfully evolved as the pop music industry has evolved. I can't think of anyone that's been doing it for as long as she has at the rate that she's been doing it. And you know, I think when you look at her career as a whole and the music that she's been making in recent years, it's not hard to understand why she has such a cult following. Being a black woman that was coming up in the mainstream music industry when she was, I mean, talk about a triple glass ceiling. And obviously you could say that there are artists that have paved the way for her, but I think she's really the only artist that has led that uphill charge for as long as she has. Really like the LeBron James of the music industry. I know that's sounds kind of weird coming from me because I'm not black nor am I a woman. But what I really respect about Beyonce is that even though she's already a legend, even though she's already had the longest and most fruitful music career you could possibly imagine, get it? Because like fruits and lemons are fruit. Yeah. She still creates music like she has a chip on her shoulder, just in the sense that she's like still hungry to like do more shit, still motivated to use her influence to spread a positive message. I mean, she literally dropped a country album last week, which a black woman dropping a country album is going to be controversial. That's just the world that we live in. Personally, I feel like she could do whatever the fuck she wants. Obviously, if she wants to make a country album she can make a fucking country album especially considering the fact that she's from texas and taylor swift was from fucking pennsylvania and she made country music and no one said anything about that because she was white post malone is making country music now and because he's white it's fine some people just have this idea that you can only make country music if you're white if you wear overalls more than regular jeans if you have whiskey and a1 steak sauce coursing through your veins i think that's kind of dumb but that's not the point that i'm trying to make what i'm trying to say is Okay, this video has obviously taken a really long time to make. I was originally planning on posting like a few weeks ago, but then I got busy doing other stuff and editing. It takes a really long time, man. It takes a really fucking long time. But I did have the chance to listen to Cowboy Carter. Now, I'm not going to talk about it too much because I am planning on releasing a video for it. But what I will say about it is Beyonce knows how big of a deal that is. And she very clearly treated the album and the country music genre with respect. You know, she's not just saying, oh, look at me with my cow boots and my lassos and my funny looking hat. Did your boots stop working? Did your truck break? It's none of that bullshit, all right? You know, at the end of the day, I can't really change anyone's minds. You know, you might think that it's a gimmick. You might think that she's running out of ideas. But regardless of her initial reasoning behind it, I think there's no denying that she's pushing boundaries by making this album. One of the first few songs, I don't remember which one it is. She worked with like other black country artists that I didn't personally know because, you know, black country music is not really a genre that I'm familiar with. It's not that widespread. But I really respect that because in a way it feels like she's kind of sticking up for the little guy, you know? Again, just leading this charge. As for my additional thoughts on Cowboy Carter, with, again, without spoiling the video that's going to be coming out soon, it honestly didn't feel like too country, which I kind of liked because like the moments that were very like leaning into it, you know, like 16 carriages, definitely like utilize the writing format in a way that makes sense without it just feeling like kind of lifeless. You know, there's very like folk style lyrics 
on this album, which I think comes from the country inspiration. That I don't think we're used to getting from Beyonce. It just definitely feels really like intimate. And I fuck with it, bro. It's kind of fire. Low key, I, at first, when I first listened to this, I was like, shit, that was better than Renaissance. But now that I've had more time to sit on it and then go back to Renaissance, I'm like, okay. I don't really know about that one. They're still pretty close in my head, but I'd probably give Renaissance like the slightest edge. Just for shits, I posted a poll on my Instagram story asking my followers who they thought the biggest pop star of our generation was. And I pretty quickly realized that I shouldn't have worded it with biggest because I meant greatest. So that was my bad. Okay, I kind of fucked that one up. But the reason I bring that up is because I do think that Beyonce is the greatest pop star of our generation. I just feel like she perfectly encapsulates everything you would want from a pop star. Like she's got no holes in her game. That plus the fact that she's managed to keep her sound and her discography so fresh over the years and not getting so caught up in what worked for her in the past, but really focusing on, you know, different ways that she could utilize her talent that are more applicable to today's music climate. And if you think about it, she really was a Renaissance woman for her time. I guess the album title makes sense because I don't think that you get an artist like Ariana Grande or even looking at some of the newer people, Tate McRae without Beyonce. And again, I wasn't alive, so I can't really say, but when I try to think about it, I'm pretty sure she's like the first of her kind. People that do what she does that were around before her, the only person that comes to mind is like Michael Jackson. So yeah, there's no denying her influence. There's no denying that she's a fucking legend. But the truth is, especially in her later albums, there's really a lot of emotional variety and like, genuinely like good music that aren't just like good from an individual song standpoint but like lyrically she's like conveying messages that are actually interesting which is like not what i was expecting at all i don't know why that came off so condescending like i'm really just popping in so much as to say yeah the guy you're watching right now kind of an idiot but the point i was trying to make is that i've always kind of associated beyonce with just making like standard dancey pop music like if i'm being honest i didn't even know that like destiny's child was like r&b and that she made like r&b music <laughs> until i started making this video don't come at me i know i'm uncultured but i would definitely still consider beyonce a pop star the reason i bring that up is because i know some people will say oh she doesn't technically make pop music like what is pop music bro like yeah there's contemporary pop that you get from like your your taylor swifts or like your standard fucking kelly clarkson's britney spears katy perry stuff like that but like pop has become like an amalgam of so many different genres these days that like yeah Beyonce is a pop star. I also feel like you could tell the difference between a song that's just like straight up R&B versus like R&B with some pop influence. Take like Giveon or like uh, fucking the old Usher songs and compare that to like The Weeknd, you know? Or like, uh, you know, apparently Cuff It is an R&B song, which, huh? I do think pop is a genre to an extent, but it also is just more of a, a general classification. Um, And yeah, I don't even know why I found this tangent necessary to go on, but I knew I was going to get some people saying, Beyonce is not a pop star. She's actually an R&B star slash rapper slash not a pop star. So just wanted to put it out there. I think you kind of just sit back and watch her do her thing in awe of a master at work. And yeah, would I say that I'm officially a part of the beehive? Probably not, because as much as I respect the music that she makes and I respect her as an individual and I respect her career as a whole, I didn't have as visceral of a reaction to listening to these songs as I did to say the Taylor Swift discography or even like the Weeknd discography. I don't know why, but like I'm not gonna fake it for the video. Although honestly, I'm not really a fan of any artist at this point other than like Olivia Rodrigo. I sort of like detach myself from artists. I don't have any like emotional stake in anyone right now. I guess I'm in like my music fuckboy era, dude. I don't know. But Again, Beyonce is cool. I fuck with her. When she drops new music, I'm gonna bump that shit. Obviously. So I would say this video was a success. You know, I definitely get why people love her so much. Like I said, she's the first of her kind. She's kind of like a modern Renaissance woman. And her discography is like genuinely really solid. I think Taylor Swift has more albums that I'm not a big fan of than Beyonce does. Or we'll say more mid albums. But not that it's a contest. You know, the truth is on the Instagram poll that I brought up earlier, my friend Gracie very politely said that I'm a fucking idiot, that I shouldn't be pitting successful women against each other. And you're right, Gracie. All right, shout out to you. Because obviously that wasn't my intent was making that poll, but it's true. I feel like in the past, I've kind of just compared artists to other artists. Even I started off this video saying, Taylor Swift is low-key not as good as Beyonce. When I should just be focusing on the good things that an artist does individually. Beyonce is a great performer, great singer, but it really just is her, her presence, her gravitas on her music that makes it stand out, that makes her one of the goats. And it's really hard to describe because obviously she's made so many different types of songs, but across all of them, you really do feel her. It's kind of ineffable. Ineffable, good word. Musical chemistry is like so much different than that. You know what I mean? It like transcends what's on paper. And I think that's the case with Beyonce. When you let yourself feel it, when you let yourself get sucked into her music, you really do kind of just sit there like, I hope that made sense. This video has kind of been all over the place, but let's just move on to the important stuff. The reason you guys are here, you guys probably skipped 
of the video and just, just wanted to see this, my album ranking. Here are my top 15 songs. Now I did make a playlist with all of them. It's called Black Wonder Woman. You could find it on Spotify, link in the description. And yeah, she's fucking good, bro. Honestly, it feels kind of stupid because like, I feel like with certain artists, you have to really dive in to their stuff to figure out what the appeal is. But even though I didn't listen to any music, I started off this video knowing that she was going to be good, that she's going to be talented. And the conclusions that I've drawn is that, yeah, she's talented. That's basically all it is. And like the triple guy scaling stuff and woman empowerment and like right place in the run time and renaissance woman or whatever. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. It helps out the channel a lot, helps the video grow. And subscribe if you're new. Also, please let me know what some of your favorite Beyonce songs and your favorite Beyonce album is in the comments. I'd love to hear you guys' takes. I feel like I might've missed a lot of songs when doing my top 15. I'll see you guys with the Cowboy Carter video, hopefully next week. Surfboard. <laughs>